Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to add our panelists now. Here we go. Mr. Hennage Mitchell, Miss Liana Hudspeth, Mr. Samsul Arafin, and last but not least, Mr. Paul Blamier. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we actually have the first question. It's from Tom. Um, he wants to know what our theory is on why Bloomberg is so anti-vaping. Does anybody want to pick that up and we can kind of discuss that? Go ahead, H. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Bloomberg, uh, when he was the mayor of New York, uh, was staunchly prohibitionist for, for drugs. Uh, he was staunchly pro prohibitionist for firearms. And um, as we all know, prohibition isn't really the best way to handle any kind of uh, epidemic or any kind of problem, uh, drinking, whatever. It doesn't work, uh, never has. But that's his mindset. He's, he's absolutely focused on telling people what's best for them based on what he thinks. Uh, that, that is, um, that is his, his, essentially who he is and what he is. And he has the money to do it. Um, so he's an idealist in that respect. Uh, he's not a pragmatist. He is an idealist. And as Carl Jung once said, every form of addiction is bad, no matter whether the narcotic be alcohol, morphine, or idealism. And Bloomberg is addicted to his power and the effects that the money can get to force people to follow his moral code. Sorry, Mr. Bloomberg, you're a capitalist. You're an absolutely horrible person down to the way you put your own personal agenda uh, in, in, into the marketplace. But more importantly, you are corrupting governments and countries uh, and states and nations around the world with your money and your lies. And we're angry about it. And, um, okay, that's gone on for why he does it. Uh, so I'll just stop there. Okay. Um, um, I have had discussions with Julie Wesley from CASA. And she is always apologizing for the effluent that's coming out of America and how it affects everybody else. What is the feeling there in America right now about Bloomberg? I didn't catch the beginning of your question, but I'm assuming that that was directed at me. Yeah. All right, because I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Audio. Okay. It's mixed. I see a lot of ordinary consumers and non vapors that are just going with the flow and kind of ignoring it and just putting up with it, indifference. And as far as vapors, uh, manufacturers, and, and other advocates, naturally, we're really upset. Um, I can't speak for everyone else, you know, with the pandemic and everything that's been going on on top of everything else, it's been hard to just focus on that subject and to see exactly where they stand. It's a really good question. And it's something that I want to look into more, but it's just, it's all mixed up. But I would say most people are just kind of indifferent and going with the flow. And that's what breaks my heart. Okay, thanks for that. Um, I'm muting people and then I'm going to unmute you because we're having audio issues here. We have another question. Um, if the Philippines if the Philippine Senate passed the bill to regulate vaping, where are the other opportunities and risks in Southeast Asia to decide this decade for risk proportionate regulation and legislation? I'll take that one. Um, and then I'll let H take that one <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> If the Philippines is able to get this through, if they're able to get this past the post, it will be the first country, obviously, in Southeast Asia to have risk proportionate regulation. If 
this does happen, there is hope, and I'm going to ask Sam about this when I finish. There is hope that other countries that are deciding about possibly regulating, that they will now have a template to follow. And I believe the next country up for that discussion is Malaysia. So I'm going to bring Sam Sol into this and ask him to have a little feedback on this. Sam? Yeah. All right. So um, talk about Malaysia. Okay. Um, I'm sorry if I'm a bit of a downer here, but um, we are just so tired with the whole situation. Uh, Malaysia is under a lockdown right now. And probably it's best for me to paint a picture of what's going on here in, in Malaysia. Uh, earlier on, you were talking about Bloomberg, but somehow uh, the effects uh, or the reach of, of the Bloomberg initiative in Malaysia is somewhat isolated. We are not really influenced by that. But the thing is that what's been happening with um, WHO and their, their approach of, of uh, being very prohibitive, here in Malaysia, we have similar problems because the problems that we are facing is mainly with the little Napoleons in the Ministry of Health and all the other government agencies. Um, so it's, it's really like talking to the wall, you know, they are, they are hell-bent at, at stopping regulation. Uh, so what we did was um, we reached out to the policymakers, the elected representatives, and we somehow uh, adopted a guerrilla approach. So we went down to the parliament and um, most of them are smokers and we give them a, a vape pen and ask them to, to try it on and you know try to, to, to convert them into, into vaping. And, and uh, to, uh, much to our surprise, they, they took it up. And even to the point where one of the ministers in the parliament was caught vaping and uh, somehow that's, that's, that's a good thing and, and this is the, the, the situation that we are facing now. The current situation in Malaysia is that we, we are now regulating, wait for it, zero nicotine liquids. Now, some people might say that, um, okay, you know, they are at least moving towards regulation, but to me, I don't see this as a step forward. It is really a step backward. And, uh, you know, uh, let's look at what is uh, zero nicotine liquids consists of. PG, VG and flavorings, basically things that you make for ice creams and cakes. Why would you want to, 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 to tax and regulate that? And that does, will, will not help the government in terms of uh, tax collection. And also, it's not going to help the vapors. So, uh, we, we are... Uh, we have launched a petition uh, to, to, to voice our, our dismay and our, our uh, issues with that. And we have garnered about uh, in excess of 10,000 supports for that, for that uh, online petition. Okay. Um, do you think the Philippines, if they do this, it's going to help you though? Well, that's the, that's the thing in here in Malaysia. Uh, because firstly, we have the the little Napoleons, the, the career bureaucrats in the government agencies. This is one group of people that we need to address. Then the other group of people is the elected representative who do not look at the, the signs or what's happening around them. And they are just looking at uh, scoring political points. So um, the situation here in Malaysia is more of um, them Gaining, gaining some political points from the from the elected representative part, and also from the um, the bureaucrats, which is really uh, um, they are set in stone. There's really no point talking to them. You know, we have represented them with with researchers and and papers and and facts, but they they are just you know hell bent on, on stopping it. So um, coming back to your to your question, whether what's happening in the Philippines. Might, might help Malaysia. I certainly hope so. It would be a good talking point and, and a, uh, a good good um, uh, development in this region, uh, something that we can use. Uh, but again, as I said, uh, here in, in Malaysia, uh, if we were to talk to the uh, elected representative, they're just talking about, you know, how can this issue score political points? And if we were to talk to, to the to bureaucrats, uh, it's just talking to the wall. So that's the situation. Okay. 
Um, Paul, isn't that very similar to what's um, going on in Australia? You'll need to unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah, what, we've now been starting to see the money appearing uh, through Bloomberg-funded enterprises as such. And the way they've done it here is actually snuck the money through the universities, through grants programs. So we've seen that. We've got a little bit of a different situation here going forward into October 1, where we're under a full prescription model. They're trying that out. So you have to visit your physician, get a prescription. And as Clive Bates said the other day, he thinks it's very dumb and stupid that we're going down this pathway. And that we then either have to privately import liquids with nicotine in it, or we have to go to like with our prescription to a pharmacy we don't know any pharmacies yet that are willing to take this up are they going to sit there and compound all the different levels of nicotine whether they're free base or salts or whatever else or even synthetic for that matter here it's an absolute mess absolute mess here in australia the the, the rhetoric that is coming out of the who is writing the policy here in australia and it's blatant they're not listening to the science. It's just lies, lies, more lies. Well, you see, that's the thing. And, and that's kind of, it kind of ties back to what you were saying, you know, Sam, about the bureaucrats and little Napoleons. And this also ties into something that Clive Bates has been talking about. I don't know how many people are aware of the letter that he and a bunch of experts sent to Tedros, I can never pronounce his last name, the, the head guy of who, of FCT and FCTC, about the tobacco regulation report now i don't know how many people are aware of it for the people that aren't aware of it basically this report calls for bans on everything um they open tank systems nicotine limits flavoring it's the same basic effluent that they've been spewing since the last cop and they're now trying to get everybody to go on board with this I'm sure by now, in case you aren't though, I'm sure by now everybody's aware that Bloomberg puts millions and millions of dollars into the WHO FCTC tobacco control program. So even though it, Bloomberg may not have a direct effect on what's going on in Malaysia, he does have an effect on anybody or any country that is a signatory to that agreement because of his influence. I am going to ask H if he would be so kind can you give us a background a little bit on Thailand? Because that's the other big country where there are a lot of vapors, but you know, you're taking your life into your hands to vape. Unmute. Unmute. Hello. <laughs> right. Hi. Uh, okay. Before I launch into Thailand, I just want to pick up on, on Malaysia and Australia, if you don't mind. First of all, uh, Sam, you, you said Bloomberg has no, um, particular direct influence in Malaysia. That's not entirely true. Um, you have a, uh, a fellow in Malaysia whose name is Mohammed Hanaki bin Nick Mohammed. Does that ring a bell? Okay. Uh, he is uh, one of the uh, one of the major naysayers uh, and he is a direct recipient of Bloomberg funding. He's a graduate of John Hopkins University or John Hopkins Institute for Global Tobacco Control, which is directly funded by Bloomberg and has actually changed their name to Bloomberg now. Um, and he is absolutely on board with the Bloomberg rhetoric and he is driving that in Malaysia. So in Australia, you have a wonderful gentleman there uh, by the name of uh, Mr. Uh, Lopez, or Professor Lopez, I beg your pardon. Um, so Alan Lopez, uh, who is, understood to be a molester of women, among other nasty things he does, uh, has um, also received funds from Bloomberg and headed up the uh, Vital Strategies, uh, a tobacco, an anti-tobacco non-profit with long ties to Bloomberg, uh, for which presumably he owns significant sums of money. Mr. Uh, Professor, I beg your pardon, Pr Professor Lopez is another one of these Bloomberg clones who is absolutely messing up the, the entire legislative uh, uh, platform with his lies. 
Um, he's also a molester of women, apparently, uh, which isn't a good thing, and was eventually dropped um, from a number of institutions, finally, after it just became obvious that uh, he shared the same predilections as our dearly beloved Professor Stan Glantz. However, you asked me about Thailand. So uh, Thailand, uh, again, is most certainly not immune to Bloomberg funding. It has a ridiculous stand on uh, vaping. Um, and it's one of those, essentially, it's, it's not even a backdoor ban. Uh, essentially, it is not illegal to have a vape device or juice in Thailand. That is not illegal. The problem is, since there is no tax code for it, you can't import it in legally. Consequently, if you have a vape device, de facto you smuggled it. And the charge for that is economic sabotage. So this, owning this in Thailand constitutes economic sabotage and has an up to 10 year jail term. So that, that's where we're at. Now, they're, they're, the consumer groups in Thailand are very active. Uh, they're up against a very difficult situation where the government owns the tobacco industry here. So they own the, 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 the tobacco production, the tobacco uh, manufacturer, the, the, the supply chain. They own it. They have no interest in vape. It just totally undermines and undercuts their money. Um, and it's interesting that the, the principal um, mouthpiece for the anti-vaping group uh, is also uh, part of the Ministry of Health and part of runs the tobacco control unit of the um, Ministry of Health and receives a considerably huge sum of money uh, as a portion, a percentage of the tobacco taxes that are collected by the government. And it comes out to millions. And... What does he do with this money? Does he set up smoking cessation clinics? Does he does he does he embrace the science? No, he just attacks vapors. He attacks uh, anybody that supports vaping. He lies and lies and lies. And he, together with the head of Ash Thailand, are the principal drivers of the hatred and bile and vitriol and lies and basically corruption that is holding back the Thai government from actually passing sensible proportionate regulation um uh but again it comes back to that major thread that runs through that's going to run through this whole discussion which is that we are being lied to all of us by people that really should know better but they're receiving funding so consequently their job is to lie so they do that uh, and this this runs across the board from 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 uh, uh, public servants, bureaucrats, health officials, to um, people who run medical associations like cancer associations, heart associations. Uh, they're all funded uh, one way or another, either by Bloomberg or Gates or let's not forget Big Pharma, who was directly responsible and funded the setup of FCTC. Let's 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 go back. I'm sorry I'm raving and ranting. Stop me if I'm going on too long. But when the FCT was started up, um, uh, yeah, well-meaning, well-intentioned, uh, that just happened to coincide with the uh, launch of the pharmaceutical companies smoking cessation products, which we all know don't really work for most people. So they saw this as a win-win. Throw a bunch of money at the FCTC, which they did the first two years of the FCT were entirely funded by pharmaceutical companies. Um, uh, and they still throw vast chunks of money in. It, for them, it was a, just a great, great win-win situation. Okay, you're setting up anti-smoking. We've got an anti-smoking pharmaceutical project, which it isn't, but we'll just stick with that for now. So yeah, we'll support you. Oh, vaping's come along. Let's attack vaping. Here's some more money. Here's the script. Uh, and then, of course, Bloomberg, Gates and the rest of those uh, philanthropic uh, uh, moralists got on board and said, yeah, this is good, isn't it? But the whole thing was set up by pharma to market their smoking cessation products. And it's still happening today. Even Bloomberg's investing in smoking cessation uh, uh, products. Uh, oh, conflict of interest much? Yes. Uh, but that's it. So, yeah, Thailand is a... Um, seriously bad basket case because the tobacco industry is owned by the government as it is in india as it is in china as it is in various countries that are particularly 
strong against vaping. So yeah, that's going to fall in with the Bloomberg rhetoric, and Thailand is right there. What's the way forward? Well, we can discuss that later. Yeah, I mean, and here's another thing, and this discussion has come up um, only in the past couple of days. I don't know if people are aware, but Konstantinos Farsalinos um, has been attacked in the British Medical Journal. Um, and he has found out that, you know, Bloomberg and these people are also paying journalists. Not that this is surprising to any of us. I mean, but this is the thing, and this is the point where we're having this discussion, is we need to, un you need to understand the enemy, you know, friends close, enemies closer, right? But you need to understand that this web is so entrenched. It's, it's public health, it's governments, it's the WHO, it's journalism. And this is what we're up against. Now, some of these, you know, this is what makes the Philippines such an amazing success story hopefully, because the people have been excluded from this and they've done this because they know that if we get out there and we speak and we tell our stories, that it's we're going to humanize this issue. They don't want this issue humanized. I mean, that is the number one thing that will probably shoot this whole thing down. But in saying that, okay, I think that like what Sam had done in the, has done in Malaysia and will probably continue to do, you need to take your advocacy and you need to take your actions and you need to, A, understand your enemy, but B, you also need to adjust it to be able to make it relatable to the people that you're dealing with. And that's something that we all really need to work on. One of the things I wanted to bring up is a lot of the time, a lot of us are, you know, go on about the science. That's not our job. I hey, H was with me at that GFN back four or five years ago when Clive Bates was talking about what the consumers need to do. And he said this again recently, we need to humanize this. We need to tell our stories. There is nothing more important than our stories. We are the evidence. Okay. And the people that are out right now is how do we all work together in order to be able to work in the various locations that we have with kind of enmeshed with the scientists. The scientists do their thing. We do our thing. Our thing is we talk about our stories. We need to be able to communicate effectively. We need to make what we do relatable. I'm going to bring Liana back in on this. I know you're a newbie and I know you're probably like, oh, stop doing this to me. But I want you to give me your input on what you think as a new advocate you would need to be able to be effective in this way. Thank you. Paul and I were just talking about this. Um, I don't have all these amazing facts stored up in my mind to just regurgitate. You know, I, I am a new advocate. Um, I've only been vaping a couple years. I know what it's done for me. I know that I, I was asked to do a, a news interview once right in front of my salon when I had only been vaping for a few months. And I had to I had, I had a client tell me, do you know what this stands for? And she said, look it up real quick. And I went out there and I got in front of, you know, God and everybody and spoke my mind on something that I was passionate about because it saved my life. And Paul and I were discussing the gap between the science, the consumer, and the general public. So looking at it from my point of view, no letters behind my name, we need small, digestible chunks. Something that's just as easy to digest as a flashy, as those flashy headlines that Bloomberg and everyone else have just been swaying to the, and feeding to the general population. It's not just vapors that we need to reach. It's everyone. It's everyone. It's the it's the person that has no history of smoking, but their dad smokes, their, their, their brother smokes, their sister smokes, their mom smoked, whatever. They're, it's, it's everybody. So the links between the science and the facts that are truth need to be put forth in small, digestible, easy to understand facts. And if they want to dig deeper, then they can dig deeper because there are those that will. Me, I'm better one-on-one -on -one with people you know, and working with them, like at my salon. I have a client who is 
a she's a um I'm sorry, she's an administrative nurse who's um, on leave. She gave me permission to document without her name, her trying to quit using vaping. And I wanna help her do that. I'm gonna help her set her up with the right device, this and that, and we're gonna log everything. And I've already got a lot of the facts written down. That's what I can do for me, you know, the one-on-one -on -one thing. But just as a consumer and even if i wasn't a vapor and i was just reading general headlines i've got i'm being assaulted by this this and this bad thing because that's what people gravitate to just like you know a scary movie we need more small bits and pieces that are easy to digest that are just as easy to remember as Ivali, which needs to be renamed okay mm -hmm. just as as catchy as that, just simple, pure facts. That's just my opinion. Um, no, you know? no, I agree. I, no, no, no. I, it, it makes sense. I, you know, when I was watching um, the World Vape Day, World Vapors Alliance live stream, which is available on, you can get to the, get to it, I think, on their Facebook page and also on their YouTube channel. But there was a does discussion between Clive Bates and Ethan Nadelman. And Ethan Nadelman comes from the drug harms reduction background in, the, in New York, like in the 80s, okay? So you've got these two pillars of harm reduction, okay, talking about what we as consumers need to do. And it basically breaks down to three main things. One is we need to educate ourselves enough that we can do these small little bites that Liana is talking about. Um, we need to band together, you know, get join an organization or join some kind of group where you can get the information you need so that you can then turn around and take your small bites of information and your story, okay, yeah. and activate that, you know, to help influence legislation or legislators or politicians and things like that. So my question, I guess the second part of my question to you, Liana, don't worry, I'll get to everybody else. Because you're new, I want to ask this because it's been a while that I've been doing this. And I think sometimes when you've been doing this for a while, you kind of forget what it was like to do it from the very beginning. And I think right. that there are a lot of people out there that want to get involved and want to do something, but they don't know where to start. Okay. So what is your thought about what we as advocates that have been around a while can do to help you or the newer advocates get involved, stay engaged, and fight the battle effectively. I think one of the best examples that I most recently experienced that actually inspired me to try harder was just another person that had been in the game longer, um, mm -hmm. catching a, like a hashtag of mine, which was undo Bloomberg brainwashing, and yep. running with that, um, getting the opportunity on a show to appear not as a guest, but just, you know, they had a like Son of Liberty radio. We had just a, a moment that we could come on and 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 tell our testimony of of how vaping helped us quit smoking successfully. There was just a couple minutes, you know, um, encouraging someone that's just trying to reach out and do something and make a difference builds us up and gives us courage to go further. Um, that was the most recent thing that I experienced and I, I have joined agencies and there is a huge volume of information. Just looking at that who report in all 363 pages was quite overwhelming. Um, but I can tell you what stuck out to me and what didn't, you know what I enjoyed reading the Royal college of physicians report on to, to the tobacco and harm reduction and health like that, that got to me that's that's what I needed to read I need more mm -hmm. digestible little bits of that that I want to put forth you know okay. it made no. sense yeah I understand exactly what you're saying but isn't it interesting you look at those two different reports and they're diametrically opposed one and is transparent like one is not and exactly. one is hypocritical and <laughs> one is truth one yeah. has a plan and said, we tried to tell you this in 1962. And the <laughs> other one is just like this diabolical, it's just evil. Like, and, and if it wasn't for you inspiring me to read that, 
I wouldn't have gone, I, I want to hide in my cave like everybody else. I'm like, what can I do? I can't make a difference. I read that and it just like lit me on fire, you know? And that's I'm good. like, <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad. My next question, don't worry, Sam, I haven't forgotten you. I want to go to Paul for a minute. Paul, one of the things that we've talked about in New Zealand, okay, is, and the thing that, that a lot of us here in New Zealand don't understand is, why is there no organized advocacy in Australia? And what can we do, the wider advocacy community, do to help you guys advocate? Well, there are still advocacy organizations here. Yes, okay. they do exist. But they're a little bit different to what you have in New Zealand. Um, we've tried in the past to put things together here they go a certain way forward and then they just start hitting hiccups. Um, I've been advocating now since, um, what, 2015, late 2014, okay. early 2015. And the changes and all the problems that we've had here in Australia, it's one fight after another here with the government. The government doesn't want to listen to us. The government will not even sit down and speak to industry leaders. They don't want to talk to us. They're just taking their own little pathway. They read whoever sends them their booklets. They're way out of date. That's for a start. And I'll guarantee you, because, yes, we are a signatory to FCTC and the professor down in Adelaide, who is right in the ear of the TGA here or the Therapeutic Goods Administration, this is where the problem lies here. If we had an advocacy organisation, sure, there is ATHRA, Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction, there's also legalised vaping, but we've also had smear campaigns put across through the media here attacking these organisations, even, even for the seed money. And Dr. Alex Wodak, um, under when the hearing was, the, um, the hearing on nicotine and vaping, the Senate inquiry, um, he turned around and he just slammed him in the end. He just mic drop moment. He said, well, hang on, we all work in this same area together. Guess what? Your money comes from tobacco too. And everyone's just, George just hit the canvas. I love the politician's face. It was just like, uh, what just happened? Yeah, I watched that. That was pretty impressive. I, it, the thing that... It's... The... All right, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go on. It's, it's hard here to get people motivated. That's a big thing about Australia. Like, you, you get going with certain things, they'll go on for a little while, and then they'll just hit roadblocks. But Why? The... the uh, and, a lot of the a lot of the people that have been involved, we're we're all very tired. There's no two ways yeah. in that one, for the amount of fighting that we do here and the attacks by an idiotic health minister, Greg Hunt, that has no understanding of what harm reduction is, and his mantra for the whole last few years has just been not on my watch. Yeah. I, I wish that the people here would keep fighting a little bit harder but they're all getting knocked down. Every time they get back just a regular everyday letter from a politician, from a government department, and it says the same thing, it's very disheartening. There's no personalisation like in the conversations. Um, that, that kills a person. Yeah, no. It, I mean, it's that... fine if you want to send a, a form letter, but come on. Well, you see, and that's the thing. I think that's a big, big point is, you know, when you look at the FCTC, again, I'm bringing that up, but, you know, human, you know, we have a right to be involved in this. And I think a lot of these people forget that this, they were talking about people. This is about people. This isn't about, you know, um, they think about obviously is tax money, you know, t tobacco excise, but this is about people. And I think that's the big part about humanizing this. Now, you know, I've been watching Australia since 2015 because that's when Africa started. And, you know, it's, you're, I see what you're up against, you know, and we've tried to support you as much as possible. And Kaffir's tried to support as much as possible. But what, you know, 
this is something, this is, Liana, pay attention to this. This is something that we've seen in other countries too. We've seen it in Canada. We've seen it with some of the advocates in the United States, you know, advocate burnout, which is what's mm -hmm. going on in Australia. It's almost as if it just all becomes too much. And I wonder, H, I'm going to ask your opinion on this. I wonder if that's because we're not focusing on ourselves and our stories. We're too busy trying to do all these other things. And maybe if we focus down into our stories and making it about us and not about them, that maybe there would be a little more fire there. H, what is your thought on that? Unmute. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think the fundamental uh, issue that we had to grapple with is exactly what Paul said. We need to humanize this. It's what everybody says. Uh, so you're right. Uh, our stories are compelling. And regardless of how you feel about politicians, um, they are. they do recognize that they're there at least in most democracies, uh, because the people have elected them. And if the people, and I'm talking about individual people, me, you, uh, write a personal letter to their MP or to MPs in general uh, saying, hey, vaping saved my life. This is my story. This is my testimonial. That has an impact. Uh, far more so than, than, than a scientific document, uh, because they're not scientists. The very few of them that are, um, you know, will 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 read the science, perhaps, perhaps. But a personal letter is important, and I think the fundamental thing that every vapor should be doing is just filing their testimonial wherever anybody asks for a testimonial, and it's as simple as writing it once, copying it and pasting it, and sending out whenever and wherever. CAFRA has a page for testimonials. AFCA has a page for testimonials. Uh, I think MOVE has a page for testimonials. Uh, Australia, you have a capacity to collect testimonials. Uh, Liana, you have the capacity to encourage other vapors to say, look, you know, give us your, just share your story, you know, um, from once that story is done as i say you could copy and paste it um organizations such as move such as uh, um, cafra can supply the uh, contact details of politicians in your country and you can just take that list and start firing out emails from your own email account to the politicians your mps other mps ones that support vaping ones that don't support vaping and just get that out there flood their inboxes with testimonials put those testimonials up wherever you can because our voices are incredibly powerful on the, on our own not so much together unstoppable and, I, and i'll say this before i said this before and i'll say it again uh vaping advocacy consumer advocacy is a grassroots movement the majority of of, of advocates they don't earn any money from this it costs them money uh, they don't have support or anywhere. They're doing this because they're passionate about it. And that's the key thing. All of us who've used vaping to get out of cigarette smoking are passionate about it. It's something we did ourselves and we're really happy for it. And we see in our own health, in our own bodies, the difference that it's made. Our families see it. We know. We know. We can look at the science that it's 95% safer, but the newspapers are saying it's not. It's just as dangerous as tobacco. That's a lie. We have to just keep putting out there whatever they say is wrong because this is my personal experience, and that really has an impact. And as consumers, that's incumbent on all of us to share our personal experiences, what it did for me, why you're wrong, why what you're doing is going against my rights, my choices, my health, and why it's not helping anybody except not even really the tobacco companies because they would transition immediately to uh, uh, less harmful products uh, if the demand was there and the regulatory framework was there. End of problem. Um, so, yeah, that, that fundamentally, your story is powerful, more powerful than you probably realize. And when all those stories are put together, they're unstoppable. As I said, this is a we are grassroots, and the thing about grass, you can cut grass. Grass back. It will always grow back, and it always grows back stronger. So bring it on. And the other thing to add to that, that's very good, families too. 
you know, kids that, you know, their parents used to smoke and they couldn't walk a mile with them. And now their parents can be active with them. And, you know, grandparents and spouses and friends, I, you know, all of those are part of our narrative. And those are the things these people need to hear. Now, in saying that, Samsel, you said you got 10,000 people to sign the petition. Tell me about those 10,000 people. Who are those people? Are they vapors? Are they friends of vapors? You know, how were you able to get them to get engaged and to sign that petition? All right. Um, we managed to get 10,000 support for the online petition in, in a short while. Uh, within about slightly more than a week, we managed to get 10,000 10, support. The thing is that about Malaysia and Malaysian vapors is that uh, we are very passionate about about it. You know, um, uh, I would say that the nature of the vapors in Malaysia is somewhat mature, and and they understand the the issues, and they are totally on board. So what we did was because uh, we have a online movement with a move on Facebook, we have about fifty over thousand members there. So when we launched our petition on our Facebook page, it got a lot of attention and a lot of support. And uh, this 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 uh, petition was uh, addressing the issue about the uh, zero nick uh, tax, and um, they they see our view, they understand, and they are uh, somewhat very supportive. Uh, so that's that's what we did in in Malaysia. And uh, to add on to that, I would like to say that the Malaysian vapors are. are really uh, mature you know there, there's a huge group of vapors here in malaysia but it is not growing it is not growing due to the fact that we have been getting a lot of bad press and uh, we have not been 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 able to reach out to people who are uh, anti-vaping and recently there's been a movement aggressive movement to to ban vaping from the anti-cancer association uh, because there's been a viral video about a, a child uh, you know, vaping and and um, so I reach out to the to the local newspaper and told them that uh, look, we are against uh, underage vaping as well. We are not for it. We are against it, and this is why it is more important for us to regulate it rather than for us to just you know um, dis dismiss it off. So coming back to what you asked me earlier on, and see, it's just that uh, again in Malaysia, I, I'm not too sure how the situation is in other countries. But the vapors here in Malaysia is very passionate about it. They are very supportive. And uh, we do get a lot of support whenever we launch any campaigns or any, any petition. Okay, yeah. No, I mean, and I think that that's um, a big... I'm going to mute you. I think that that's a big point that needs to be made is that the passion, just like H said, like you said. I know that with New Zealand, Paul can back this up. You know, when we started out, it was like 10 of us. <laughs> now we're like 20 of us, 20,000 in the entire community, and probably about 2,000 people really active in the group. One of the things that we did, and which is also one of the things that goes back to what Ethan and Clive were talking about, is educate ourselves so that we can educate other people. And I think as vapors, I think every vapor should be an advocate because you are an example of something that has made your life better. And it is your responsibility, I think to share that information, to share the facts about this. And if this means, you know, having to write the letters to the newspapers, yes, they may not accept them, but you keep doing it. Writing the letters to the politicians, keep doing it, okay? It's it's almost, yeah, you feel like you're up against a mountain of, you know, you know, you're not getting ahead, but actually you are, because even if you can't get the letter published in the paper or you can't get the meeting with the politician, like Liana said, if you can convert and switch one person over, that's a success. That is a success, and you have to celebrate that success. And I think that's the whole point of World Vape Day, too, is, hey, look at all of us. I mean, when World Vape Day started last year compared to this year, I don't have the full stats yet, but, I mean, it was much more active this year. There are many more people either A, vaping, or B, who now feel empowered enough to actually speak about it. And that's one of the big things we need to do is we need to empower other people to speak about it, okay, and to say, hey, this is, you know, this is about me. Let's stop focusing, I think. Let's stop focusing on what this person's doing or what that person's doing. Yeah, we need to know about it because we need to know your enemy. But let's more focus on what we can do to help each other and to help smokers and to help other vapors. 
focus on that and then the rest should kind of fall into place because you could go crazy looking at all the negative things in the media and all the things that, you know, the attacks on us. I mean, there were some consumer advocates that were attacked in medical journals and stuff. Okay, yeah, you address it. But the main core focus of what we're doing is we're trying to help people switch away from the thing that's going to kill them to the thing that most likely will not kill them. And I think that's probably a fair assessment. I open the floor to all of you. Unmute yourselves and speak. I, I understand exactly what you're saying on that. Um, we tried a couple of years ago to get our videos out to the different departments and people like government organizations here. That didn't work too well. They weren't interested. Um, asking for meetings, they weren't interested. We'll, we'll, we'll just keep fighting, but every time we we move forward here then the health ministers just go bang and stop it again we move forward again they stop it again they move forward oh we go backwards three steps now it's like playing snakes and ladders in australia and we're the only we're the only country where yes you need a prescription for nicotine and the current law and the highest fine here for possessing it without without prescriptions and things like that is Western Australia, and that's forty five thousand Australian dollar fine. Then they were talking about the importation fines for when October one comes around. The original figure that was put on that was two hundred and twenty thousand. Oh, but you got to add the two thousand for GST, so it's two hundred and twenty two thousand dollars. <laughs> So you can't forget the GST in Australia, GST on, on everything. So you have to add the, yeah. the extra 2000 for that. That's people going to jail if they ever go down that pathway. But I think that's more or less to, to stop big manufacturers moving in and setting up shop here. The other, the other problem that we have here is putting together a proper framework for the liquid manufacturers and for the vaping industry. There's a whole lot of different things that need to be done. The lid has to be lifted. The lid has to be lifted on manufacturing processes. There needs to be proper videos put out from the manufacturers showing their way through their labs, showing that everything is clean and above board, that it's not being made in your bathtub. Right? That, that's another thing. The, yeah. There's small things that all need to add up into one big picture, but until everyone comes and sits down or does their own little part, we're not going to move forward real quick here in Australia. Yeah, and it's almost like the politicians don't real there don't realize they actually work for the people. Well, They're kind of like Malaysia. Okay, okay. You know? we have we have the highest cigarette prices in the world now, um, and people don't also understand that around the world we we're watching lower socioeconomic actually now going without food so they can smoke yeah. uh that shouldn't have happen that anywhere in the that we shouldn't have happen that anywhere too. in the world no it shouldn't yeah, but it, it shouldn't actually happen. shouldn't well let's I want, I want to switch gears for a minute um before we you know end this there's something that also came up, you know, originally the FCTC was up against smoking and now it seems like the WHO and the FCTC, it's not about smoking anymore. It's about nicotine. There's been this change from smoking to nicotine. Okay. Um, maybe what we need to do, and I, I, you know, I'm very weird. I don't want to denigrate a smoker. I smoked for so many years and I know what it's like to be treated like dirt because you're a smoker. Um, but you know, how do you think we can best address that from a consumer perspective? Liana, do you have any ideas about that? Because I mean, they keep, you know, the thing that, that drives me nuts is I'm always saying nicotine is like caffeine. It's a dependence. It's not an addiction. I can live without my nicotine. I'm miserable. Just like if I don't have my coffee, I'm miserable, but I can function without it. Um, is this something that's come out of the States? Is that an, something that's been running around in the United States and that's why we're all experiencing that? I've been I've been trying to focus on the for myself the whole yeah. safer nicotine campaign because I'm yeah. gonna have my nicotine I need my nicotine 
Right. I need, and I, I need, I don't want to say I need, there needs to be a need. clear picture painted that it's not the nicotine that's causing cancer and all the problems. It's the tar. It's everything the from smoke. actually smoking combustible cigarettes. It's not the nicotine. And so yeah. for myself, at least like on Twitter, um, you know, safer nicotine has been something or clean nicotine is a hashtag that's also, you know, been part of my repertoire lately. But it's not the nicotine. It yeah. isn't. And I need it. Like, I, yeah, that's it's the yeah. first thing in the morning. I can live without the caffeine. I'll get a caffeine headache. But don't if I don't have my nicotine, I'll have a breakdown. Seriously, I won't even I be able to work. I think a lot of us are like that. I think it, I know with me and you and I've had this discussion. It helps me focus mm -hmm. without it. I'm like, eh, you know, I'm all over the place. I mean, I'm all over the place anyway, but it keeps me less all over the place. Yes. I saw your face. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> just thinking about myself. On. Right. Um, that's okay. I just outed myself, but that's okay. Um, how, you know, it, the scientists are the ones that have to fight that. And luckily, you know, we've got, some really big names now that are that are up against it and they're saying hey let's say hey, wait a minute you know there's something wrong here you know and people who are involved in 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 developing the fctc are turning around going wait a minute it's not nicotine it's smoking i'm not sure how we can fight that battle i think that that may just be as the, the scientists and the experts i'm gonna switch it to h because he always has an opinion on these things and he's much more articulate than i am h how do you see we should as consumers don't make that face yeah. should address that <laughs> it's the gap between the science and the general population yeah That's how do we, we address that unmute it's that that's a good question and i don't think there's an easy answer um uh, i i think Part of our problem is that people who are anti-nicotine, anti-smoking, anti-everything, right, they're entrenched in their position. And I mean, this, we see this a lot in the world these days. You're either for Trump or you're against Trump. There is no middle ground. Uh, for, the, for the vaping situation and the, and, and the nicotine issue, um, it's very difficult to counter the, the propaganda and lies when 50% of doctors in basically the world believe still believe that nicotine is carcinogenic. It isn't. Even the WHO itself has said, if you want to use a patch for the rest of your life, if that will stop you smoking, no problem, because there is no known health consequence from long-term use of nicotine. That's from the WHO. Use a patch, use it 24-7, 365, no problem. Bear in mind, a patch contains 30 times more nicotine than one cigarette so if it's okay to put the nicotine 30 to 30 times the strength of one cigarette on your arm or wherever you want to put it then nicotine's not the problem is it and i think that that one fact right there that one statement from the who just blows the whole thing out of the water and i think it's something we all need to understand what the who said what the royal college of physicians said what a, a, a number of health uh, uh you know, departments and what have you have said, nicotine is not the issue. So now suddenly it's become the issue, but it's not the issue. So how do you do with it? Um, I, I just want to, to, to seg segue from that into the, um, I get a lot of emails from um, uh, Ash in the US and elsewhere. I don't know why, but I do. And uh, I, I forced myself to read through them. But one thing that became clear to me is that there's, when they're not talking about vaping and they're not trying to demonize tobacco companies, everything else I agree with. We need to get away, effective ways for smokers to get away from smoking. Harm reduction is one of those and they deny it. But it is actually, as we know, WHO's, FCTC's, it's actually there that harm reduction is a part of tobacco control strategy. Um, but... I think that there is some mileage to be made from agreeing with the principal issues that are being raised by ash, various ashes, by various groups, that 
Uh, yeah, we totally agree. Smoking is dreadful and it needs to be stopped and we need to support people to get away with it. We totally agree that it's totally inappropriate for vaping or anything else to be given anywhere near children. And any government that hasn't yet passed regulation to restrict the sale of vape products to minors are idiots. Total idiots. Why are you not taking, paying attention to this? But we've seen it in Malaysia, we've seen it in New Zealand, we see it in Australia, we see it in the Philippines, we see it. It's all oh, the children. Yeah, um, but, you know, it isn't an issue. Oh, it's an issue. No, it's not. Your figures that you're coming up with are completely wrong. The real figures, which are done by independent people who are not paid money to come up with the figures that you want, show that there is a decline in new smoking, uh, a modest uptake on vaping, very few children taking vaping uh, that aren't already smokers. And anytime you see a tick up in vaping, you see a, a commensurate tick down in smoking amongst youths. I've, I've segued away from nicotine. But what I'm trying to say here is we can agree with a lot of what the tobacco control um, lifers have to say. We do. We agree. We totally agree. And we did something about it personally by taking an alternative to smoking and have benefited accordingly. That's that's hence the um, you know the, the importance of putting your, your story down. But there's one other thing as well, which, which I want to segue back to Bloomberg and the rest of it. Okay, there isn't a country in this region, not one, that has not had their health policy on tobacco control influenced by Bloomberg's money. Not one. He is funding not only universities and uh, tobacco control advocates. He's also funding health departments and giving money in the Philippines, in India, through the Union, in uh, in Pakistan, in Indonesia. Uh, it's pernicious. And here's the thing. What the Philippines has noticed, and I have a great deal of hope on this, is that, you know what, this foreign billionaire and his money have corrupted our sovereign nation's right to make decisions based on evidence that is clean and truthful for the benefit of the people. Basically, what's happening here is the Bloomberg Foundation and others are actually corrupting sovereign governments throughout the world, and particularly in Asia. And whether you're a vapor or a smoker, whether you agree with it or whether you don't agree with it, there's one thing that anybody that is a citizen of a sovereign nation can most certainly get behind is, why is this government allowing foreign entities to fund and manipulate and direct health policies using, in this case, totally wrong science? There's laws against that kind of thing, both in the US, where Bloomberg is based, and also in every single country in this nation. In Australia, it's really, really clear. You can't, it was done to stop Chinese influence, but it works for us. Look, this guy's taking money from a foreign entity and he's influencing politicians. That is constitutionally and legally unacceptable. It is a crime. So if you're accepting money from Bloomberg or Pharma or whatever and spouting out their line, you have been corrupted and you are deliberately using those funds to corrupt our sovereign government. Uh, I'm going to segue. Think that's a point we need to, to, to get across. And, and I there's think another point. Coming to, we're coming to a point where that information <laughs> is going to be very widely available and our anger at the exposure of our governments receiving funding from foreign entities to influence policy negatively is going to spill over. And some people need to watch their asses because we're coming for you, baby. I'm well going to segue. I'm going to segue into that. That's a, there's another thing as well. You, you have a right. You have a human right to harm reduction. You have a human right to make informed choices about your health. I'm always harping about this. People are like, oh my God, yeah. But it's in the FCTC Article 1D. It's in the UN Declaration of Human Rights. Okay. Not only are these foreign people going around and, and, and messing with sovereign countries, but individual human rights are being denied and stepped on. And that's something, a little small bite for you, Liana, that's something that also needs to be pointed out very clearly because it is a right, there's a human right to health. I like that. Okay. I like that. So, you know, that's something, yeah. Um, Sam, is there anything that you would like to add to this discussion? 
Right. I just want to add on a, a bit about what H said earlier on about the uh, nicotine patch. Um, well, you see, uh, nicotine products is okay only if it is uh, if it is a product from the big pharma. So if it is not, then that's a problem. So that's the thing. Uh, the thing is that I'm I am angry, but. Uh, I believe um, we will win this battle because we have the numbers. Uh, the science is backing us up and um, we are saving lives. Bottom line is that's what we are doing. And that's why I believe that we will win this battle. Oh, no, I agree. I feel the same way. It's, it's it, Paul, any final thoughts? The only final thought, <clears throat> pardon me, the only final thought that I have here for Australian and the region for the minute is that just keep watching what's going on here because i said this actually on a show a few months back australia is like a petri dish when it comes to policy and how they want to try and play with something or test it out a testing ground as such um mm -hmm. we saw we're seeing that now with the prescription model and there's been other chatter from a couple of other countries that they might also look at it if it works here, which I think is very, very stupid. Um, but plain packaging laws, that all started here in Australia, taxes or tobacco taxes and how to hike them up through the roof, that all started here as well with some of the bad policies that we've created. But please, if you see calls to action for Australia or you want to know what's going on, find us on Twitter and go down the rabbit hole and try and help out with what's going on here and in Malaysia. Um, where are you at now, Henny? Are you in Thailand? If you're in Thailand, help out there as well. Nancy's over there in New Zealand and Liana's over there in the US. We all have problems with this same entity. How about we try and wipe a bit of sheen off this entity and say, well, look, enough is enough. You've been polluting the water now for so many years. Get out and let us swim. It's our time, not yours anymore. Bye-bye, Bloomberg. Get out of the water. Yeah. You're not welcome. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. And, and, and the more we fight again, and this is, it, you know how things always get worse? The night always gets darker before this dawn kind of thing. You know, things always get worse before they improve. I think that's what we're seeing. And I think that's what Sam Soul is talking about. And I think that's what H is talking about is, you know, the more we know and the more information we have the more they're going to try to you know castigate us and knock us down because they don't want the truth to be out so we've got to stay strong in that and we have to you know keep fighting because it's about us it's not about them it's about us you know liana do you have any final thoughts it's hard for me to put into words but you know when i when i read my fellow humans saying why do i have to fight for something that's good that's saving my life that changed my life that just it just gets to my heart you know i i don't really have final thoughts because i get tongue-tied on things like this all i can say is i'm going to do what i can do and and i'm really glad that you reached out to me that you had me read those things that um that people embrace that I wanted to do something more and that you had me look at this on a global scale. You know, it's yeah. easy for me to get caught up in just my country, you know, and I saw a little bit of Australia naturally because of Paul's influence, but to look at where every country is at, to really look at it on a global scale, really, it, it reignited me. You know, it pulled me out of the hole from the pandemic and everything else and said, what difference can I make? And and where can I go other than just going to a, rea a rally, signing a petition, um, putting a, you know, submitting a video for the Golden Old Lease Tour, Capital Tour. Um, what else can I do? And I am going to write that letter. And it's yeah. easy for me to Google who my leaders are. And I am joining other and supporting other groups and you know, regurgitating their messages um, wherever I possibly can until I do have enough of those facts that I can go forth and you know, maybe I can have lunch with a mayor someday and start there. I don't know. All I know is it's, it's, 
what can I do? Well, I mean, here's the thing. As, as a new advocate, and in a way, you're in, in, in a better situation than the rest of us were when we started. There's more of us now. And even though I'm in New Zealand and I'm dealing with New Zealand and Asia, you know, you know, you can contact me. I mean, I've, I talk to um, Ivana in Canada all the time. We're all here to help each other. We're all fighting the same battle. We're just in different fronts. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the main thing, educate yourself so you can educate other people. And it's really, you're the evidence. That's the one thing I can say to any new advocate or any vapor out there. You are the evidence. Clive nailed it. That's all you have to remember, you know? H, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, I'm going to unmute you. Oh, okay. First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much for having me on, on, on the show and uh, uh, honored to be in the presence of uh, Paul and Sam and Liana. Um, really appreciate it. Um, for anybody that's listening, uh, I think there's a couple of clear takeaways from, from, from what we've been discussing. Your story is absolutely pivotal in getting the message across. We, we don't have to fight the vested interests, uh, all of them, uh, at every, for everything they say, because some of what they say is actually appropriate. Yes, we all share certain things. So I think it's important to, to not just launch into an attack on somebody without saying, you know what, you've got some good points. We agree with this. This, this we agree with. But we do have an issue with this because, and this is why. That, that way you're, 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 you're giving them some support. You know, dear politician, we really support your efforts to end smoking and what have you. However, uh, you know, you're ignoring one of the key ways of doing this. Here's a shitload of evidence that you can have a look at, which you won't, can't be bothered. But again, if a lot of people do that, it, it, it pulls the needle back, right? So we all have the, the, the opportunity, and I think that, that the moral duty to do that, to actually get our stories out there and engage with the regulators and politicians to let them know. Um, and, and finally, um, though I could go on, as we all know, for forever. Um, I think, it, I think it, it's, it's very important that it, wherever you are, find the local consumer group in your country, find the local advocates, find the local activists, and say, hi, what can I do? And it's usually pretty simple, as, as Sam pointed out, sign the petition. Oh, CAFRA has a petition, please, everybody, sign CAFRA's petition. Uh, it takes no time at all to click, 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 done, you're there. Add your, add your testimonial, copy and paste it. There you go. Done. Keep doing this because, uh, as again, Sam says, we have the numbers. We do. We have right on our, we have truth on our side. But we are up against people who have significant vested interests, whether it's the pharmaceutical companies who are trying to just destroy vaping so that it clears the path for their ineffective smoking cessation products, it, it, for the philanthropists who are on a moral thing, and it, actually both Gates and Bloomberg have invested in. Uh, uh, have a health hail, which is a medical vaping device. Um, so there's a, a, a conflict of interest there. And all the heads of the associations who are all paid for by Big Pharma's money. They're all supported by Big Pharma in every single country. Uh, you're not going to change their mind so long as they're receiving the funds. Because if they say something that doesn't agree with what the script is, they're out of luck. They're out of work. There goes their salary. But we've seen it in Australia with the former head, of, I think it was the former head of the Australian Heart Association. Uh, uh, you know, was, uh, he was on, on the nod on my watch and it's all dreadful, dreadful. Six weeks after he lost his job, he said, actually, vaping's probably pretty OK and people should consider that. So once they get away from the money, um, now they can start saying, oh, OK, I can put some integrity back into my life. Uh, I think it's incumbent on us. The last thing I have to say, and I'll repeat what I said earlier, the information is out there. We're getting more and more names and numbers of who's received what from where. And, you know, the, the problem is, who is funding this? And when I say who, I mean WHO. Who is funding this, right? Who is funding who? Because if you can identify that, and we know who you are, we know who you are, um, at that point there, you know, your little love fest of people all up there reading off a script and, you know, outdoing each other on rhetoric and hatred and vilification and ban, 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 ban. You're all low-level entities who are not speaking 
for the people that you're supposed to be representing. You are actually speaking on behalf of uh, billionaire philanthropists who have a moral agenda and pharmaceutical companies who have a clear vested interest and always have worked to destroy the vaping industry. Well, sorry, but we're not going to let you do that. And the way to do that is to just be as angry and outraged as you should be once that information comes across your desk. My God, our Department of Health is taking money from a foreign entity and they're spreading lies on the back of that? Excuse me, Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. President, these guys need to go and you need to launch an investigation and you need to disregard everything you've been told by these people because they've been utterly corrupted. And that's where we get to. That's where I think uh, the next step is. Uh, uh, fundamentally, as consumers, we are allowed to be outraged when someone's trampled on our rights and has lied to our governments and corrupted our political systems with their billions of dollars because they've got the vested interests. And our stories stand as stark contrast to the lies that are being told. I took this up. I quit smoking. I am leading a much healthier life. That's it. Bottom line. Never mind all the science. This is me. This is how it worked for me. This is how it works for millions and millions of other people. And it can work for hundreds of millions of other people. And you, okay, you will lose money on tobacco tax. That There is that. But hey, you're only collecting the tax because you say you've got to use that money to offset the damage that the health issues that are created from tobacco. You won't have those anymore. You don't need the money you tried telling that to the government but that that, that that's <laughs> that's what the that's where it all comes down to money money yep thank you hey everybody thank you for joining us today i hope you uh, enjoyed this conversation I hope the people that are watching enjoyed this conversation um we'll probably do this again next month with you know more people or different people or whatever you just let me know but any comments um leave it on the CAFRA facebook page i'd really appreciate that and to my panelists, thank you all for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Vape on. Vape on. Thank you. <laughs>